we're taking a look at some of the ways that we can use Scratch to make our sprite, our sprite is this cat over here, we're trying to make our sprite move around the screen a little bit and explore the different ways that we can have it move and turn direction and that sort of thing. So this might be your very first introduction into using Scratch. That's kind of the intent of this video. So I apologize for some of you, you might already know some of this stuff. But for those of you who don't, and this is brand new, we're going to take it a little bit slow just to make sure that you're comfortable with everything that you're going to see running this program. Over here to the left of the screen, you're going to see a whole bunch of different blocks. There are lots and lots of different tools that we're going to be able to use in Scratch. I don't want this to overwhelm you because we're only going to use a few of these today. So there's lots here and we'll get to them later on in the course. But early on, as we're just starting to learn Scratch, we're mostly going to be focusing on just a few of these blocks along the way. And again, I'm going to show you which ones we're using. Over here on the right, down here at the bottom, there's a whole bunch of different controls that let us well, manipulate our sprite a little bit. So you'll see things like uh, X and Y. That's the, the location of our sprite on the screen. So what you can try and do is just click on it and drag it a little bit. And when you let go, you'll see that the direction has changed, or, or excuse me, the location has changed. So you can move it around and every time you move it and drop it, we'll get a new location. See if you can grab your sprite and actually bring it right back to the center as close as you can. I did pretty well, minus seven and 11. Now the other part is because it's so hard to get it perfectly where you want, you can just go in here and actually type in the numbers that you're hoping for. So if I put it at zero, zero, that will put my sprite right back at the center of the screen. Another feature that might be fun to play with is the size. So you can change the size of your sprite. So let's try, try making it small. I'm going to make it uh, 35. Makes it quite a bit smaller. Uh, you can play around with that for a minute. I think there's a limit to how small you can make your sprite. And there's also a limit to how big you can make your sprite. You make it pretty large. In fact, I think you can almost fill the whole screen if you make that size large enough. For what we're going to try today, let's shrink it down. Let's go to around, uh, let's go to around 50. So it's large enough that we can still see it, but it's not going to get in the way of some of the work that we're going to try and do either. The other feature that you'll see here is direction. And if you click on direction, you'll notice that a, a compass pops up and you can grab the arrow and you can spin your sprite. So you can see how that works. What I want you to notice is that if the sprite is pointing directly to the right, that's a direction of 90. If it's pointing directly down, we'll see if I can get it. There we go. Oh, it's close. Uh, that's a direction of 180. But what's interesting is if you rotate the other way to the left, now it's going to say negative 90. So a rotation clockwise is positive. A rotation counterclockwise is negative. But again, we can just type in a number here. So let's say I want it to be facing straight down. If I type in 180, there we go. And our sprite's facing down. Let's go back and change that, though. I just want it to be facing to the right facing uh, at an angle of 90 degrees. That kind of gets the, the starting point ready for us. We've got our, our sprite, our cat, ready to, to be moved on the screen. And you'll see here, actually, in our motion block, uh, one of our very first options is move. So we're going to use that. I'm going to slide it out because it's there already. But I do want to grab one other block to put at the beginning of it. And basically, this is the, the block that's going to start our program. So click on events, uh, the yellow block, or the, the yellow tab, I guess, over here on the left. And there's lots of options here that say when something happens. I'm a fan of this one. I just like when the green flag is clicked, this signals that our program is going to start. So when the green flag is clicked, move 10 steps. That's telling our sprite. You can tell it's our sprite because it's got the little cat up here in the top corner. Uh, move 10 steps. Now, 10 steps isn't very far. It's actually really hard to see it. So let's change that. Let's make it uh, 100 steps. There we go. And that's actually created a program for us already. When, when we click the flag right here, we want our sprite to move 100 steps uh, in the direction it's facing. So let's give it a try. I click the green flag, and he moves. I click it again, move again, click it again. And then we start to run into a problem. He's about to go off the screen. So we run into a bit of an issue here. I can I can drag the sprite back, and and I could try and rearrange it and put it back here to to the center, and I could change it each time. But what I really want to be able to do is just say, hey, when I start this program, I really want my cat to start at zero zero, 
and there's a block for that. So if we go back to motion, you'll notice down here, uh, the fifth one down says go to, and it's go to a particular location, and it it's currently says zero minus six, because that's where my cat is. But I'm just gonna change it. I want it to go right to the center, go to zero, zero. And at the moment, I want this to be the first thing that happens in my program. Go to zero, zero, go to the center, then move 100 steps. So go back to the middle, then move 100. Let's give it a try and see if that works. Okay, so my cat ended up over here. So it went to the center and then it moved. Let's try running it one more time. See if you notice anything as I run it. So I'm running the program, but I don't think you're even seeing the cat move, are you? So I, I told it to go to zero, zero, and then to move 100 steps. So here's an interesting thing about doing some coding is coding works perfectly logically, exactly what it's saying to do. And it does it very, very quickly. So this is actually happening. It, the cat is moving back to the center and then it's moving 100 steps, but it's going so fast that we can't see it. Like it doesn't matter if I hit slow motion or anything, we wouldn't see this happening here. So what I wanna do is I wanna add in a little feature in the control section, which is a weight. And this can be really, really helpful, especially when we're doing things with, with moving. I just want the cat to have a little pause before it moves. So I'm gonna go ahead and you can see I can slide it right in here in between my go-to and my move. Now, if I try running the program, hopefully what we're gonna see is the cat move to the center and then it's gonna take hundred steps forward. Back to the center and it moved. There we go, this looks better. Let's try it one more time. Center and move. Okay, we're in good shape. So this go-to at the beginning, sort of these initial conditions to get the program started up really helps. Now, let's see if we can get our cat moving a little bit more. Um, I would like the cat to make a right turn. So I would like the cat to turn and face downwards now. And again, I can do that in the direction here, but I want everything to happen inside the code. So I wanna be able to hit this green flag and have everything just work. So if I want the cat to turn, I'm gonna go back up here to motion and notice that there's, there's turns. There's a turn clockwise and there's a turn counterclockwise. And I think, it doesn't really matter which one I pick. I'm gonna pick clockwise. So currently this says turn 15 degrees. Um, but if I wanna make a perfect right turn, a perfect right angle turn, uh, that angle should be 90 degrees. Now we're gonna go back to the center, wait for a moment, uh, move, and then turn. You know what I think we should do? I think we should add one more weight in. That'll make it easier for us to see it. So go to the center, wait, then move, wait again, and then turn. Ready? Let's try it. Center, move, and there's our turn. Now we're facing downwards. So that's pretty good. This has worked. Now let's try it again and see if it still works. Ah, uh, we have a problem, don't we? It's remembering the direction at the end. It's not resetting the direction. So I can keep running it and I'm actually gonna be able to get it back to the center and facing the right way. There we go. But I wanted that to happen every time. I want the beginning of the program to have my cat facing to the right. So uh, remember, we, we kind of fixed a problem like this before. We had to fix this go to zero, zero problem, right? Make sure we go back to the center. Well, if we go back up to motion, there is a similar one right down here, a little bit further down to the bottom called point in direction. And let's slide that out as well. So point in direction. I always want to start this program with my cat facing to the right. Let's see if this works now. Go to the center, move forward, turn. Okay, now when I run it again, the cat should go back to the middle and the direction should fix. There we go. That's worked. Okay, let's add in one more step. Let's do another move. Let's move 100 steps again. I'm going to put another weight in. Again, these help. Um, something you might want to do, you can put in decimals for these weights. Oops. Because if you have a lot of them, it will make your program just go really slowly. So now it's only waiting for half a second. So this will go a little bit faster for us. What I want you to notice again, it should move. Um, and then it should change direction, move again. Or excuse me, point in the direction to the right, wait, move, right turn, wait again, and then move. Let's see. Nice. So our cat's moving pretty nicely. And if we keep running it again, it's always doing the same thing.
Okay, this is pretty good. Now, something I want you to see, because it's not super exciting to just have the cat move, it's nice if he can actually trace out a path. And there's a tool for that, but it's not necessarily obvious at the very beginning. Um, there's a pen tool, but it's not here. We have to add it automatically. So it's down here in the bottom left. If you click on this blue square, it's got a little plus and sort of like a flag here. Click on that and add in a pen. Now you've got this added pen tool over here, which we can use in our program. And uh, this works very much like, imagine our cat is actually holding onto a pen and we're going to tell the cat what to do with the pen. So there's erases, there's stamps, there's pen down, pen up. We can change the color and the size and lots of things. I'm only going to use two of these though. I'm going to slide this one here that says pen down. And I'm going to put it right here, right after the point in direction. So what we're saying is that as, at exactly this moment, I want the cat to put the pen down on the page. Let's see what happens. There we go. So it's drawn. So our cat started here. It's moved, but the pen's down now so we can see the lines being drawn. I'm going to run it one more time and watch the problem that's going to happen. Do you see the problem? It drew this extra line. It made a right angle triangle, which I suppose is kind of interesting, but it wasn't what I wanted it to do. I just wanted it to keep making these two lines, the horizontal line and the vertical line. And all of a sudden we have this diagonal that, that's kind of in the way. The reason that that happened is because our, our pen is down, right? Every time, if the pen is down, the cat remembers that. And so it's going to keep drawing with the pen down. There's a couple ways that we can fix this, but the easiest one is using this feature right here, which is the erase all. What I'm going to do is I just want to erase everything that the cat might have drawn in a previous running of the program. I'm going to put that right here. And it's important where we put it. So there's, there's sort of three, well, kind of four of these initial conditions to get the program running now. Go to the center, turn in the right direction, then erase everything, and then put the pen down. If you want to play with it a little bit, you can try changing the order of some of these and see how it, it changes things. But the key is that we wanted to erase everything once we've gotten back to the center and we've set the right direction. I suppose the erase all could have gone right after that go to as well, but it was important that it happened after we went back to the center. Let's try running it. There we go, looking pretty good. And if we run it again, it erases everything and starts over. Now, what I want you to try and do, and you'll probably need to pause the video in a minute, uh, I want you to try and finish off drawing this square. See if you can keep going. There's nothing new that you need to add other than these features that we've had here, using the turns and the moves. Um, notice we're gonna need to, a, a turn next, right? See if you can finish off drawing the square. Notice we've been moving 100 steps every time, and if we're making a square, we better keep moving 100 steps but you're gonna to need to get your turns in the right spot and your moves in the right spot. So I'd encourage you to pause the video now, um, then turn it back on and I'll, I'll finish off the program for you. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna try and finish off making our square. Notice we've done pretty well. We've, we've already got two sides of the square drawn. The next thing that we need to do is we need our cat to do a turn. And remember our turns were 90 degrees. That should make it turn, and now it's going to be facing to the left. It's going to be upside down, but it's going to be facing to the left. We're going to need to move another 100 steps. Let's give that a try, see how well it's working. Mm, I didn't have the weight in there, did I? Let's add a weight back in. Not that it's completely necessary, but it is nice to see it. Weight here, and another one right here. All right, one more time. And again, as I was mentioning before, you can imagine if our wait was much longer than half a second, the program starts to take quite a bit longer to run. Uh, next thing we need to do, I think uh, we just need to turn and move one more time. I'll show you a little shortcut. If you right click on your code, there's an option that says duplicate. There's also an option that says add comment. You might want to try that too. But the, the duplicate is kind of nice. Wherever I click, it will duplicate all of the code that comes after it. So I'm going to click right on this weight right here, right click, duplicate. And you can see it's made exactly the same code for me one more time, because really, I just need it to do exactly the same thing again. A little pause, turn, a little pause and move. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, if you want to get rid of something, just drag it to the left and it'll disappear. Okay, so if you had extra code that you didn't need. I'm going to go back and duplicate one more time. Right click, duplicate, and I'm going to slide it to the bottom of my code. So we've got a pretty long code here, actually. Oh, it's running for me. Got ahead of my click. I'm going to try it one more time. Here's the green flag. And we've got ourselves a square. And with that, you pretty much know everything you need to in terms of just having your, your sprite move around the screen a little bit. There's other options, right? We've only done a few of them. Remember, we looked at move and we looked at turn. There's some other things here that you might like. Go to random position is fun. Uh, glide is a really nice option. Um, you, can do, you can do other things here. But if you've got the go to and the point and direction, the moves and turns, then you pretty much know everything you need to know at this stage of the game. Thanks very much for watching and good luck with the rest of your coding.